Today's pharmacology topic is the rhyonidine receptor antagonist and calcium channel blockers. First, let's review some important components of the skeletal muscle cell. The sarcolemma is the plasma membrane of the skeletal muscle. Inside the muscle cell, the sarcoplasmic reticulum stores high concentrations of calcium. The sarcolemma has frequent invaginations, known as T-tubules, that allow action potentials to be propagated toward the interior of the cell. Along the T-tubule, there are dihydropyridine receptors, also known as L-type calcium voltage-gated channels. Coupled to these channels, but embedded in the sarcoplasmic reticular membrane, are other calcium channels called rhyonidine receptor channels. The rhyonidine subtype RYR1 is located in skeletal muscles. Action potentials traveling down the sarcolemma leads to the opening of these channels. Once open, calcium floods into the cytosol of the cell. The calcium ions then diffuse through the cytoplasm toward the actin filaments, which are composed of G-actin monomers. Troponin proteins are attached to the tropomyosin, which is a strand that covers the G-actin active sites, preventing cross-bridge formation and preventing interaction of myosin and actin. Calcium binds to troponin, causing a conformational change in troponin, which then causes tropomyosin to move, uncovering the G-actin active sites so that myosin can now attach to the actin to form a cross bridge and initiate muscle contraction. The muscle relaxer dantrolene is a rhyonidine receptor antagonist and binds to the rhyonidine channel to prevent it from opening when the action potential reaches the DHPR. This prevents release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and prevents muscle contraction. As mentioned, dantrolene is a direct acting muscle relaxant that blocks rhyonidine receptors in skeletal muscles. It is indicated for the treatment of muscle spasms associated with the following conditions, multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, spinal cord injuries, and malignant hyperthermia, or MH. MH is a severe reaction characterized by fever, muscle rigidity, and tachycardia. Although rare, MH occurs in susceptible individuals that are exposed to volatile general anesthetics, like halothane, and depolarizing neuromuscular blockers, like succinylcholine. Dantrolene is more selective for skeletal muscle because the heart has rhyonidine type 2 receptors instead of type 1 that is located in skeletal muscle. The rhyonidine receptor gets its name from the poisonous alkaloid called rhyonidine that binds to this receptor. Rhyonidine is found in the woody stems of the South American shrub called Rhyania speciosa. Rhyonidine is also used as an insecticide and is a stomach poison that causes insects to stop feeding after they ingest it. The rhyonidine receptor exists in three main isoforms. RYR1 is mostly expressed in skeletal muscle. A mutation in RYR1 is associated with the condition known as malignant hyperthermia that we just discussed. And this is characterized by high body temperatures and skeletal muscle contracture. RYR2 is the main isoform in the brain and cardiac muscle. Mutations in this receptor lead to cardiac arrhythmias. RYR3 is expressed more widely in many tissues, including the brain. Alzheimer patients have been shown to express higher levels of RYR3. The L-type calcium channel, dihydropyridine receptor, or DHPR, gets its name from the drug class that blocks them, the drug class known as dihydropyridines. Here is a list of some drugs in this class. These drugs contain the dihydropyridine group, which is a ring made of mostly carbon atoms but has one nitrogen atom. Dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers are more selective at blocking vascular L-type calcium channels compared to cardiac L-type calcium channels. Dihydropyridines cause arterial vasodilation, which decreases systemic vascular resistance. This action makes them useful in the treatment of high blood pressure and angina. Unfortunately, this action also causes a stimulation of reflex tachycardia. This can negate the benefits of decreasing afterload. 
All dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers have dipene in their generic name. Non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers don't have the dihydropyridine group. Two non-dihydropyridines used clinically include verapamil and diltiazem. Verapamil is a calcium channel blocker of the phenylalkylamine class. Both verapamil and diltiazem are more selective for the heart and less selective for calcium channels in the vasculature. For this reason, they are indicated for the treatment of angina because they decrease force of contraction by the cardiac myocytes and therefore reduce cardiac oxygen demand. Diltiazem is a calcium channel blocker of the benzothiazepine class and is in between dihydropyridines and verapamil in its selectiveness for calcium channels of the vasculature. Because diltiazem suppresses cardiac function and is also a vasodilator, it is able to reduce arterial blood pressure for hypertensive patients without producing as much reflex tachycardia as seen when using dihydropyridines. Both verapamil and diltiazem are class 4 antidysrhythmics and in addition to hypertension and angina are used to treat cardiac arrhythmias including paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia abbreviated PSVT and for rate control in atrial fibrillation. Now for some questions to assess your understanding. Please pause the video after each question while you think of your answer. Thanks for watching.